I'm about to start restoring my 1984 Talbot Matra Rancho that's been off the road since 1996 and before I take it apart I want to see if I can get it to run. So in this video I'm going to be using my special patented Kylie Minogue process for firing up barn find cars. The first step is to see if the engine has seized and that means taking out the spark plugs. Front hinge bonnets like this are all very handy for not flying up if the latch lets go at high speed, but they do get slightly in the way of major maintenance tasks, major-ish. So I'm going to take it off with the aid of some of my trusty Bulldog BDX penetrating fluid to help release the bolts. To get at the plugs, I also need to remove this air box, which is cable tied on, which probably isn't ideal. So we'll replace that with a Jubilee clip when it all goes back together. This is held together with spring clips, which of course ping all over the workshop. Ah, well. Looks all right in there, I think. I've seen cleaner, but I've also seen a lot worse. Liking this so far. One thing I've learned is that you need to make these things idiot proof. Yeah, no need to tell me. One of the ways of doing that is if you're doing anything with taking off plug leads and things is label them so you know which one goes back where and you don't put them back in the wrong order and then scratch your head wondering why it won't run. Next, I'll take the plug leads off and then give it all a blast with some compressed air to get any dust that might have accumulated in the wells around the spark plugs. Three of the plugs come out easily enough with a ratchet spanner and a plug socket head. But the fourth one sits under the thermostat and there's been some sort of leakage of coolant at some stage, so it's kind of rusted in. Oh, ha ha ha. Yeah, okay, that's... That's in there rather firmly. Let's give it a bit of a BDX treatment. Okay, no more Mr. Nice Guy. There we go. There's a bit of rust and gunk that's got around the outside of the plug here but there's no indication that it's got down inside the ball or anywhere near the electrodes so that's good. I will just need to do some more cleanup around the spark plug hole though which I'll do by putting some Vaseline petroleum jelly onto a screwdriver so it's nice and sticky and then that should clean up all the crap from around the hole without letting it drop down into the head. Yeah. The final step for now is to put a little bit of diesel down the bores just to lubricate anything and free anything that's seized up and then we'll leave that to soak overnight and then we'll see whether the engine will turn over by hand or whether it's seized. With the spark plugs out there's no compression in the cylinder head so it should be possible to turn the engine over by hand. If you put the car in fourth gear, you can normally do this by rolling it along on the road wheels. Can you see anything? No, hold on. You can mostly see dust. It's gone in nicely. But of course, I've got the Rancho up in the air in this case, so there's no rolling to be had. I did try turning the driven wheel by hand instead, but either that doesn't really work, or it's seized, or I just hadn't had enough Weetabix this morning. Not sponsored. So anyway, it's off to Halfords to get a 36mm socket so I can attack the crankshaft directly. So with all of the plugs removed and two extensions, come on, I knew you had a And three pairs of hands. There we go, that was easy. Well that's turning nicely, and look it's even turning the wheel. I declare that turning freely, winner. Happy days, the engine isn't seized. I don't need to worry about perished cam belts snapping either because what you can see here is the alternator belt. 
So the next job is to put some fresh spark plugs back in and then add some fuel to make fire. So for fuel, I'm not gonna use the car's own petrol tank because heaven knows what state the lines are in or the fuel pump, or for that matter, any fuel that's left in the tank. Uh, in fact, I can guess what sort of state that's in. It's probably like varnish. So we're gonna to have to take the tank out anyway to do the welding. I'm gonna worry about all that later. For now, I'm just gonna rig up this, which is a gravity feed petrol tank. You just fill it full of petrol, hang it up, run a hose, not necessarily in this order, run a hose from here to the carburetor, um, turn on the tap and fuel will go through and the gravity will be enough to prime it through and hopefully uh, get the car to start. This is 5.6 mil hose. I always keep a range of hoses handy in stock, even just a couple of meters or something, because you never know what size any given bit of hose is gonna be. Even on one car, they can vary. So, uh, and this I'm pretty sure is ethanol resistant hose. There's my Y piece. Again, out of a box of stock connectors. They don't cost a huge amount, these boxes of spares, and you never, you never know what you're gonna, need and it's good to have a range of things to hand there's nothing worse than getting part way through a job finding you don't have something like a fuel hose connector and then having to go out and spend an hour and a half going to get one uh, i get all my fuel hose and stuff from car builder solutions because i trust them that if they say it's ethanol proof it's ethanol proof the fuel pump on a rancho is mechanical so it's not a simple matter of removing a relay to turn it off I've used a Y connector here so that whatever it does pump up from the tank stays in the sealed loop rather than pumping into a bucket or onto the floor. So with fuel and sparks set up, we're almost ready to go, but not quite. I'm only planning to run it for a short time, but it still needs the warm protective embrace of some engine oil and some coolant. I love that the header tank on these is just a big glass bottle like a oversized Yuki Brown. There's not a lot of coolant in the header tank. There's some evidence that it was wet in there once. Only the finest Evian for this. It's not really Evian, it's just a bottle. Uh, it's our fine Glamorgan tap water, which is lovely and soft. So I'm not worried about it furring up. Has that made any impression at all? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I'll put some coolant in as well. I use this uh, on old cars generally. Well, there's two, two big advantages of it. One is that if you don't know, if you've got an old car and you don't know whether it had red, pink or blue coolant in it, if it was blue and you add red, then it turns to jelly or vice versa. Uh, and uh, that's a problem then to flush out. This stuff is yellow and doesn't react with either of the others. It'll mix with them, so uh, you don't can't do any harm. The other thing about it is it's bitter. So it's not sweet, so if you spill any, then passing cats and dogs don't lick it up and poison themselves. So we like it for those two reasons. Whoop. I'm now over the minimum. So that will do. Next up, electricity. Oh, maybe we'll get a new battery then. One of the countless benefits of having way too many cars is that if the battery goes flat on one of them, there's every chance that the battery on one of the others will probably fit. In this case, it's this from my Vauxhall Victor 2300S. You know how battery trays always rot out? Look at this. A tiny little bit of surface corrosion there, but only a tiny bit. That's looking good. A bit on the tall side. How to not have that short out against there. There we go. We've got electricity, once I've tightened that up. Plugs are in and connect, the leads are connected up. They're in the right order, or at least they're in the same order they came off in. I've got coolant. Uh, we should check it's got some oil in it. 
The conversion to right-hand drive means that the brake master cylinder and brake fluid reservoir are right on top of the oil filler cap on the rocker cover. It's quite difficult to get at the filler with a can or indeed with anything. I'm gonna have to... Yeah. <laughs> what I don't have is a spare clean funnel. It is left-handed and uh, it's all gone over the side. That's gonna smell lovely. I eventually went off and sourced a clean funnel, but it's still really difficult to use it and a can at the same time. So we'll need a different arrangement for filling it properly. So for now, I'm just going to put in a few cupfuls of oil and that will have to do. That's all the ingredients in place. So just one question remains. Will it run? Right, let's try that again. Might be flooded. some puddles underneath. That one's engine oil where I spilled it. That one I don't think is. Ah, yeah that's fuel leaking from, that's wet, sodden. You see that? The petrol is running down from there, down under the distributor there, and ending up on the ground. That's not ideal, so I'll have that off and replace it. So on goes a fresh piece of hose and hose clips from my supplies stash and we're ready to try again. Kind of running. Yes. Yes. That's running really sweetly. Of course, just as I say that, it stops running sweetly, but that's because it's run out of the fresh fuel and it's running on the ancient coal tar that's sitting in the bottom of the tank. It's a little bit smoky, but really not bad, you know? All right, of fuel now. Or at least out of that fuel. Excellent. Right, now it's time to take it apart.